on News from South East tonight. The great class divide. More evidence that pupils from state schools are less likely to make it to Oxford. On the up again, tube fares increase above the rate of inflation. And the bus driver who is being considered for a top writing award. Join Mike and me for more at 6.30. The six o'clock news now on BBC One with Nicholas Witchell and Moira Stewart. The Secretary of State for Wales, Ron Davis, has resigned after what he's described as a serious lapse of judgment. Mr. Davis has told of an encounter with a man on Clapham Common in London. A school in Glasgow where an 11-year-old was found with 500 pounds worth of heroin in his satchel. Serbia is pulling back its forces from Kosovo as the minutes tick away to the NATO deadline. And floods in South Wales and the Midlands and northwest of England as the storms continue. Good evening. A cabinet resignation as swift in its execution as it is mysterious in its detail. The Welsh Secretary Ron Davis has become the first member of Mr Blair's cabinet to step down after an encounter with a man, a stranger on Clapham Common in South London last night. Mr Davis said he gave the man a lift in his car, picked up two of the man's friends and was then robbed by the man at knife point. Mr Davis has acknowledged a serious error of judgment, though he's denied the meeting was a sexual encounter. From Westminster, our chief political correspondent, John Sargent, reports. Ron Davis decided to give only one interview this afternoon. It was at the Welsh office just before the official announcement was made that he had resigned as Welsh Secretary. He gave little sign of the emotional turbulence he must have gone through. I was a victim of a crime. I had given a full statement to the police. They are investigating it. And uh, what I want to do now is to minimise any embarrassment to myself, my family, uh, or to the government. The incident began, according to Mr Davis, last night on Clapham Common, not far from his home in South London. The Welsh Secretary was said to be feeling under pressure. He wanted a bit of space, and he went out for a walk on the Common. In his resignation letter to the Prime Minister, he described what happened. Whilst walking, I was approached by a man I had never met before who engaged me in conversation. After talking for some minutes, he asked me to accompany him and two of his friends to his flat for a meal. We drove in my car to collect his friends, one male, one female. Shortly afterwards, the man produced a knife and together with his male companion, robbed me and stole my car, leaving me standing at the roadside. I reported this matter immediately to the police. It emerged later that Mr. Davis was robbed on a housing estate in Brixton, but in his interview, he refused to give details. Isn't it enough to say that as uh, a member of the cabinet, I am uh, accepting that I was guilty of a, an error of judgment. I put myself into a position where I was the victim of a crime. I believe that that has caused, uh, certainly caused embarrassment to me. I believe it has the potential to cause embarrassment to the government. I want to minimise that and therefore I have resigned from the government. But if you don't describe in more detail exactly what happened, how can people judge whether you were right to resign as Secretary of State for Wales? You, you have to accept the fact that uh, I have made a very clear statement that, in my opinion, I was guilty of a, a, a lapse of judgment. It's something that I regret. As a result of it, I was the, the innocent victim uh, of a crime. The police are investigating that. But in order to minimise embarrassment for myself, my family, and to ensure that this government can get on with the business of governing this country with the very highest standards, I feel it appropriate that I should resign. And that's what I've done. Soon after the interview, at a briefing in Downing Street, the Prime Minister's official spokesman denied that Mr Davis had been involved in any sexual encounter. In the Prime Minister's letter to the former Welsh Secretary, Mr Blair said, given the situation you described, I accept your decision to resign. I do so with a real sense of sadness. You have done an excellent job for the people of Wales, particularly in the way you have prepared for the establishment of the Welsh Assembly. It's clear that the full story of what happened last night has not yet emerged. We don't know, for instance, why it was that Mr Davis initially appeared to trust the man he said he met by chance on Clapham Common. It appears that only his wallet and his car were stolen, and not any of his red boxes with official papers. But we do know that Mr Davis believes 
His misjudgment was so serious, he's had to cut short a very promising career. John Sargent, BBC News, Westminster. Ron Davis's place in the Cabinet has been taken by Alan Michael, the former Home Office Minister. Mr Davis was also Labour's candidate for First Secretary to the planned Welsh Assembly. So far he has not stood down, but there's intense speculation that he will do so now. Our political correspondent Carolyn Quinn reports. Good morning. And it is a very good morning in Wales. The crowning achievement for Ron Davis, the referendum vote in favour of establishing a Welsh Assembly. The win for the Yes camp was narrow, but nevertheless it hailed the start of a new and historic role for the Welsh Secretary. Appointed to the job at the election in 1997, Ron Davis thought to build on the referendum vote by announcing his intention to enter the race to become Wales's first Prime Minister or First Minister. He was elected as Labour's candidate for the post in September against fierce opposition from fellow Welsh Labour MP Rodri Morgan. Other Labour colleagues say they regret that Ron Davis will no longer see that project through. Well, I'm extremely sorry. I think it's very tragic. He fought so hard for the Welsh Assembly, got us a very good vote in the referendum last year and was, had just been elected to lead that Assembly. I think he did a, a, a very good job for the people of Wales. I'm sure he will go on doing so. Well, I think we're all shocked. Uh, it's well known I've had political differences, major political differences with Ron. Uh, but they've been political and I think this is very sad that no one would have wished this on him or indeed of any member of any political party. Ron Davis has had his differences with the opposition parties as well as colleagues within Labour. At the party conference earlier this month, he urged Plaid Cymru to stop promising what they couldn't deliver. The question now is whether Mr Davis will continue to fight them in the Welsh Assembly. There's a question that still has to be answered as to whether Ron Davis will continue standing for the National Assembly. Um, I don't know the whole background and therefore it would be difficult for me to give an opinion on that. But losing him will undoubtedly be a blow to Wales. If he intends to run still as the leader of the Welsh Assembly, he should think again because I think the public would find that utterly inconsistent. Ron Davis was rewarded for helping to push through a Welsh Assembly by being invited to become a Druid, joining an exclusive group, most of whose members are skilled Welsh speakers. Mr Davis himself was only ever a learner. Now he'll have to learn about life out of government. Ron Davis will be replaced by the current Home Office Minister, Alan Michael. Carolyn Quinn, BBC News. Well, joining us now is our Chief Political Correspondent, John Sargent, who is at Westminster. Um, John, we obviously have to tread very carefully here, but I wonder if, is there any more that we can say, or indeed even very carefully speculate about the circumstances here? Well, it's a very odd story. We know that he was feeling under pressure. That's what the Prime Minister's official spokesman said. His wife wasn't with him. They live near Clapham Common. He then has his strange encounter with a man. We don't know why. The Prime Minister's official spokesman was asked specifically about sexual encounters. He said no. He was asked about gay encounters. He said no, there's no question of that. So we're left really with a complete mystery because on the face of it, he, as he puts it himself, the innocent victim of a crime, his car was stolen and his wallet was stolen, but now he's resigned. Well, now, in the normal resignation book at Westminster, that simply does not fit together. So we don't know the full story, but we do know that he's acted with extreme speed. He's reported the incident to the police. He saw the Prime Minister this morning, and he clearly now believes that his career is so badly affected he has to resign straight away. First resignation from Mr Blair's cabinet, a blow, of course, to, to the government. What of the way this has been handled today? Done very swiftly, hasn't it been? Done very swiftly and in a way rather strange because he just did this one interview. So again, there was no opportunity apart from I was the person doing the interview. I could question him as hard as I could to say, look, we need to know more details before we could judge this. He simply said, look, it's my judgment that matters and I believe I've seriously misjudged it. But obviously there was a limit to what I could then do in terms of finding out more from him about the details. And that was then the end of it. So from the point of view of the government, it was done as cleanly as possible today. But I suspect that this is going to go on for some time. He was a dominant figure, really, for Labour in Wales. Do you think he's got any political future? It's hard to see how you can resign as Secretary of State and then do what he wanted to do, which was to stand for the Assembly and become the first First Minister, in effect, as it were, the Prime Minister of Wales. So it does look, I must say today, as if, for reasons which we can't fully explain, Mr Davis's political career is at an end. John Sargent, thank you.
An investigation is underway in Glasgow after an 11-year-old schoolboy was found with heroin worth 